as I said, I was a farm boy, naive, when I enlisted in the Air Force. And right away, I started learning things that I didn't know about the outside world, if you will. The Korean War had just started in June of 25th of 1950. I enlisted 4th of January, 1951. A lot of 21 year olds were um, rushing to join the Air Force, Navy, some even to the Marines, rather than being drafted into the Army. Lackland was just overrun with recruits. The uh, government had stopped college deferments at the end of 50. So Master Sergeant Lansinger reviewed my records and saw that I had uh, college. And he talked me into uh, applying for officer training. He kind of got the ball rolling and wrote the first letter to get me an officer training. But there was a long waiting list for pilot training. And in November of 52, I was commissioned second lieutenant and got my observer's wings. I'd been a navigator less than a year when I went to pilot training. There's no way I could have been washed out of pilot training after that. I was, I was very highly motivated. I got my pilot's wings on the 27th of October, 1954. It's been said that if you could fly the T-6, you could fly anything. We finished up the T-6 there at Goodfella, and then at Williams, we flew the T-28 and then the T-33. I didn't really want to fly the F-105, Thunder Chief, so I volunteered for F-4 training. I had a very harrowing experience on the 26th of June, 67, we'd been to the bomb range and the instructor was leading and I was flying number two and didn't have any control. And uh, I tried using rudder to raise the nose and all the time the nose was just continuing to drop. Finally gave up at the last I mean the last possible instant. And I said, Mac, eject, eject. And I pulled my handle. Of course, being in a 90 degree bank, the ejection seat shot me out to the side. And I saw the airplane hit before my chute opened. And then I hit the ground like a ton of brick. Still had the 55 pound seat kit strapped to me. I didn't have time to deploy it, and I was in severe pain. I thought I'd broken some ribs. It turned out that I'd got compression fracture on two vertebrae here in the thorax region. At that time, I didn't know if my back seater got out or not, and I asked them, and they said, yes, sir, he's standing up over there taking his parachute harness off. So I kindly just kicked back and relaxed until a helicopter picked me up. So anyway, I moved the family back to Texas and I went to Vietnam. On Sunday, the 12th of May, 1968, Mother's Day. That was one of the biggest battles of the Vietnam War was going on at that time at a place called Cam Duck. It was a madhouse. We scrambled off, weather was bad. We had the holes above the uh, overcast, went down through the clouds. The overcast was very low. Hills were sticking up into the overcast. My first pass, I saw a big explosion northeast of the base, and I thought, Somebody had dropped a two or three thousand pound bomb. Went on with a mission. I'd made dropping the bombs and firing the gun with short bursts. 
I'd made about 15 passes. After I ran out of ammunition, I made 10 more passes. Didn't have anything, but they said every time I'd come around Viet Cong, I'd run for cover for a few minutes. We succeeded in evacuating everybody that lived. That explosion that I had seen on my first pass was a C-130 that had just taken off with 188 Americans and South Vietnamese on it. They all perished, 188 people. And uh, another flight finally got down there and so we were cleared to leave, go home. I do not in any way feel that I'm a hero. Many of my friends and people that I didn't know, we've, we've got the names of over 58,000 heroes on the wall. So those are the people that signed the blank check and gave it all.